Yeah. <gasps> oh my god, Jen, we have power. <laughs> oh my Lanta. <gasps> there you are. <laughs> Hey, big booty Jamie, tell him what you're doing. Putting the solar panels on the roof. Is it as easy as you thought? We'll see. Hey, sunshine. Yeah. Her bus is getting sunglasses. <laughs> Determined. You got this. We've marked out where the four brackets for this solar panel go. We're using these blind fasteners because we haven't got access from underneath because we've put a ceiling on already. And when you tighten it, this compresses so it like pulls to the roof. And for more structure, we've made sure to position the brackets on the steel ribs. So we're not just screwing into sheet metal, we're screwing into sheet metal and the steel ribs. So we're secure as balls. And then we drill 7 16th hole, which these fit into perfectly. It's a little persuasion. Just like that. Like a glass. And then once these are all in, we'll put die core self-leveling corking on them to seal up the holes. And then we'll screw in the solar panel. Our man is back to help give us a smile. Our trusted man. That's tight. This one. So this one. Click. So now they're all connected. So it all starts up here with the solar panels. We have three 175 watt panels. Funnily enough, they're actually 175 bucks each. One of them smashed, but Amazon was so nice to us. So basically, the negative of this one is connected to the positive of this one. The negative of this one is connected to the positive of that one. And then okay. we have a, a negative and a positive going into the roof inside, which you are now going to see now. Been busy, busy. The electrical system is coming to get a brief run through. Warning, the following clips you're about to see may make you fall asleep, but if you plan on doing solar, it may actually be very helpful. You have been warned. Got a 500 amp hour battery bank, 3000 <laughs> watt inverter charger. Then we've got a cut off switch, positive bus bar, negative bus bar, 12 volt breaker fuse panel, Renergy Rover charge controller. I wired in all the 12 volt stuff. So the positives, negatives, positive negatives. And then I'll add the fuses in when I figure out which fuse goes where. And this. Cheat guide. Is the cheat guide. If you've not come across this website, this website is the best. For people who don't know it, let me. Once, so once you've figured out the size of your solar setup and your battery bank and all that stuff, you can find it here. So the one that fits us is the 525 watt solar and 500 amp hour batteries. All that means is these are how big your solar panels are. So we've got 375 watt solar panels, which equals 525 watts of solar. And then five 100 amp hour batteries. So we have a total of 500 amp hours. So then you can click on that and it takes you directly to the diagram with all your components. So here you can see that there's the five batteries, attach them to the three solar panels, charge controller, inverter. We haven't gone with these specific models, but the real neat thing about this diagram is every single component has a link to Amazon. So every single size nut, wire, bolt, fuse. So let's take this one for instance, it's saying we need an 80 amp ANL fuse between the charge controller and the batteries, you click on that. And we don't have any. And I don't have any Wi-Fi at the moment. But once you woods. click on that, it takes you straight to the Amazon product page. You can add it to your cart. And, and also no. at the bottom of each diagram, there is a shopping list of how many quantities, lugs, how many quantity wire, everything that you need for your solar setup. It has a shopping list. You can tick it off, add it to your Amazon. And, and this has just made life The so, picture so easy. is good too because I'm definitely a photographic learner. It makes it so much easier. So here's the website URL. We'll put it in the description. If you're doing a solar setup, all you need is this website and it'll do it for you. It's great. So I'm just cutting these 
This will be all the battery wire. So I'm measuring between each lug and then just cutting them and then I'll attach the lug. It is so hot, I can't even film this. It's getting steamed up. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's like 105. What's going on? We have power. What? Come. Ready? Yeah. What? That's the water pump that you can hear. But you see the fan? You hear that when it beeps? Yeah. <gasps> oh my god, Jay, we have power. <laughs> oh my Lanta. We got power, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> How happy are you? So happy. I am so happy. It's insane. This is crazy. So the moment you've all been waiting for, we're gonna talk about all of this. So first things first, our solar panels come through this cable all the way down, one positive, one negative, comes into this solar fuse so I can turn it on and off. From there, it goes into our Renogy Rover charge controller. We have five 100 amp hour batteries all connected to provide a 500 amp hour battery bank. From there, the positive goes to a positive bus bar the negative runs all the way along here to the negative bus bar. So all of these thick, thick ones are 2O wire. So this goes through the floor and is connected to the chassis of the bus to provide the ground. This negative goes to the batteries. This negative goes to the ground of the inverter right here. This negative goes to the inverter negative terminal. This negative goes to our 12 volt fuse panel right here. And then this thinner wire goes to the negative of the charge controller. On the positive side, we have this 2 o wire coming to the positive bus bar. Then this six gauge wire goes from the positive bus bar through a fuse right here to the charge controller. And then this charge controller is pretty fancy. It has all these settings so you can see. So this is now I have this turned off and it's pulling no power from the solar panels to the battery. If I flick it on, there's a bit of a delay. We're parked in the shade and it's pulling in 1.5 amps right now. And one thing never do, never connect your solar panels to your charge controller without your charge controller being connected to the batteries because you'll blow your charge controller because basically power's coming in and it's got nowhere to go, so this will blow. Then, on the next terminal of the bus bar, it goes to this shut-off switch. This shut-off switch allows me to turn the power from the batteries completely off. So I can isolate all this battery bank by not allowing it to go to the rest of the system. So from the switch, I have another 2 wire going to another positive bus bar. This 2 o wire is the positive going to the 12 volt fuse panel. Again, there's a fuse there. This one is 100 amps. The other wire on the positive bus bar goes along here through a 350 amp fuse, I believe. Goes along there and connects to the positive of the inverter. So let's talk about the inverter quickly. This is a 3000 watt inverter charger. And what that means is it can invert the, the power basically from 12 volts, which is in our batteries and can convert it into, into residential power, which is 110, 120 volt, however you want to say it. And the charger aspect means that we can plug into shore power. So put a plug into the bus and that will provide us power go through here and charge the batteries. So we have two ways of charging the batteries. We have solar power coming through these cable through the charge controller into the battery bank. And then we have shore power, which comes from this plug, this plug outside goes along this six gauge wire into the inverter. And then from the inverter, it goes along this cable all the way up around down into the breaker panel, which is just like your ordinary residential breaker panel. Um, I'll open this up and we'll quickly have a look inside. So this is the mains power coming in from the inverter. They've not been connected yet, but 
I'll take you through what's going on. So these three 12-2 wire, so that just means it's 12 gauge and two insulated wires. One goes to the front of the bus, one goes to the, the back of the bus, one goes to the right side of the bus. So we've got the neutrals going to the neutral bar, the grounds going to the ground bar, and then the hots going into the individual breakers. And then our, for our 12 volt system, so everything that's running off 12 volt, you can see you can see marked here. I've got my main lights, my water heater, bed lights, toilet, the water pump, the max fan. So if I just pull this cover off, this is what a 12 volt breaker box looks like. So you have all your positives along here, and then all your negatives along here. It's very simple. And then you've got your negative that goes to the negative bus bar, the positive that goes through fuse to the positive bus bar. That is just power coming straight from the batteries, straight into there. The majority of our bus will be powered off that. The only things that will be on the 110, 120 side is the fridge, the AC unit, laptop chargers, phone chargers, all that kind of stuff. One thing that, that boggled my mind was getting all the gauges right. So I'm gonna run through every single wire in this system. I'll put the links to everything in the description just to help you out. 2 -oh wire, same positive negative. This then goes for a fuse right here. I think this was a 300 amp fuse or something. And that's connected straight to the, the positive terminal that goes to the positive bus bar. Then this is 2 -oh wire. And then with every positive, that comes off the bus bar, I have fuses. So I have this fuse which goes to the charge controller, that's 80 amps, 8-0. So the fuse that goes to the 12 volt system is 100 amps. Then we have another fuse that goes from the positive bus bar to the inverter which is 350 amps because I'm going for a 3000 watt inverter charger. I think that pretty much covers it. If you have any questions, just fire them, because this, this was a lot of research, a lot of figuring out, a lot of getting the quantities and lengths of wires, and it's all different. There's no one size fits all. You just have to spend the time, figure it out, and get to know. Because this stuff is expensive, so you mess up, you're buying the same part twice. So you just got to get it down. That pretty much covers it. I hope I've covered this well enough. I'm no professional, so don't hold me to anything if yours blows up. I'll put a link in the description for all the parts, all the wires. There's one web website that really helped me out with this. I'm going to put it in the description. It is a lifesaver. I think I mentioned it before. Good luck. You can do it. it you can figure it out. It just takes some time. takes commitment. It's one of those things. It looks overwhelming, but once you start getting components ordered, getting components installed, start connecting each thing to each thing. It comes together and it makes sense. By the end of it, you'll know what you're doing. And the great thing is, if anything ever breaks or a fuse blows, you'll be able to diagnose it and find it straight away. So that's how we did our solar system. Thank you for watching. Until next time.